Alright everybody, and welcome to something that's a little bit different. Uh, this is a bonus video for Quest for Glory 5, where I show you the stuff that uh, I kind of forgot to do the first time. And you can see my terrible creation of the hero in Hero, uh, what is it called? I don't even remember. It's this program we all used to use back in the day to make D&D portraits. The Whirlwind Spell. So you actually have to visit Erasmus twice before day three. Uh, there's no real reason to do this though, so I didn't do it in the LP. But yeah, you visit him on the second day and he's got a little bit of special uh, dialogue for you here. The doors begin to open for us and we step right on inside. Hi again! The boss decided to show off for you. Follow me and I'll show you around. And I really like it when Erasmus shows off. You find out Erasmus was a secret exhibitionist this entire time. He's here! Oh, lovely. He looks like I forgot pants. Oh. And it makes a little smiley face, and then he appears. Yay! How you doing, Erasmus? Ah! Greetings to you again. I just wanted to make a grand entrance for once. Impressive, wasn't Sure thing, buddy. That entrance had to be seen to be disbelieved. So, let's go see how old Erasmus is doing. Always a pleasure to see you, dear boy. I hope you have been having a good time in Silmaria. Plenty of things to do there, after all. All those merchants. Shop till you drop and buy till you cry? Oh, they aren't that expensive. They are pretty expensive. This is my winter home here in Silmaria. I have trouble working my magic when it's too cold. Yeah. Snow way he'll stay in Spielberg this time of year. He's a madman. I see. Talking behind my back in front of me again, eh? What am I, Gefelta fish? Fenris is quite a skilled wizard in his own right. He's a master of arcane arts for myth catonic you. Dangerous mm, place crap. for rats. Right next door was catatonic you. It could have been a real catastrophe. Killing me already. They're killing me for already. For years, the kingdom of Silmaria has been a peaceful place for my winter home. I don't generally get involved in things. When you are as powerful as I, you know, it is better not to meddle in the affairs of others. In what sort of affairs do you like to meddle? Can I have did a joke? Did you hear about the man who didn't pay his exorcist on time? His skeletons came out of the closet and the ghost played hostess? No. When he didn't pay his exorcist, he was repossessed. Repossessed? Get it? No! <laughs> I'd rather I didn't. Oh, yes, of course. Here, take this scroll. You will now have the scroll of whirlwind. It's a wonderful spell. Yeah, it'll really blow you away. Kill me. So this one automatically reads itself for you. I look in my inventory anyway, because I'm a goofless. Here's what the icon looks like. It's pretty, uh, pretty spiffy. So I decided I would demonstrate it for you guys in combat right quick. This is post-commentary, by the way. I'm sure you can tell, but... So yeah, it's actually really good for crowd control, even though you don't really need it. It's easier to just frostbite everybody to death. But uh, yeah, you can just put a little spin on your enemies, so to speak. And uh, blow them to hell. Look at that, he can't do anything. He's just spinning around, making a torrent of vomit. It's awesome. So yeah, it works pretty uh, pretty well. We just go around uh, zapping these enemies with Yonder Whirlwind, and then uh, I actually use Fireball for once. And it makes the corpses spin too, which is kind of funny. And then I ran out of mana. So I decided I would go ahead and show you that in fact any class can wield a sword and shield in this game, including a Weezard. And uh, it works pretty well to be honest. So I messed up in uh, the, my playthrough and we didn't get to uh, dance at the No Man Inn. So I actually managed to get that to trigger. I talked to Wolf or No Man about Wolfie earlier. And sometimes, when you come into the inn later on in the game, she will ask you for some help. I really, really need your help. Oh, please 
say you will, pretty, pretty, please? I do a lot for you, no man. Fine. Great. I told everyone that I had a belly dancer to entertain this evening. Unfortunately, Tessie couldn't fit into the belly dancing costume. My gal Sal has a black eye, and Tony has a broken toe, so they couldn't do it. And that left Rover, and he refused. All you need to do is go up on stage, get dressed, and come out dancing. Just wiggle your butt and wave your arms, and you'll do fine. We're all rooting for you. I don't get paid enough for this. But a hero's gotta do what a hero's gotta do, even if that means dancing in a belly dancer costume. And that fucking bastard that stands outside of Salim and Julnar's is there to watch me. <sighs> I end up dancing in all these games and I don't much care for it. I gotta wiggle my sexy ass. I don't know how they got fake boobs on me. Maybe, maybe he just has like severe man boobage. Poor bastard. He's really sensitive about that, you know. And I head back in in shame. Yay! So I try to talk to the civilian for some reason. He doesn't have anything to say, but Wolfie does have a few things to say. How it you doing? Very nice to be out at night instead of painting all the time alone. No man asked me to come to the inn this night to see a dance. I did not know that it would be you that was dancing. Neither did I. The dance was most interesting, I am thinking. Were you aroused? Thank you very much for the dance. I have never seen anything like it before this. And hopefully you never will again. You owe me no man. That was fun. I don't think I laughed so hard since Tony Maloney made phony baloney. <sighs> you did good. You can dance for me any day, Jay. I will not. It was fun, honey bun. For you, maybe. I'm out of here. So finally we get to romance with Katrina. Something that I talked about doing when I was doing my playthrough, and honestly, I didn't even wait to hear if you guys wanted to see it. You're seeing it whether you want to or not, dammit. So we just paid our life to restore Katrina back to, uh, life. And she's gonna talk to us here in a minute. So I've been told. You have given your life to bring life to death. Her soul shall soon be free. I see life before me. I am awakening from this nightmare at last. Yay. Meet me on the island known as Zante. I will be awaiting you there. Couldn't you come out with me? You could ride in my beautiful balloon. I guess not. So we hop on over to Zante, hop off our sexy balloon, and we uh, go pay Katrina a visit. And she's looking rather glum, and I forgot to eat earlier, so I grabbed some uh, some apples, I guess. So she's got this door that leads to nowhere, and you gotta knock on it. And don't try to pick the lock, or you will die. Welcome to my new home. Forgive me if I do not meet you in the daylight. I am still unused to such glorious brightness. I thank you greatly for freeing my soul from the realm of death. I have been dead for so very long, and it is wondrous to be alive once more. Yes, it is quite special, isn't it? So how you doing, Katrina? It will always be a pleasure to see you. As you can tell, I have been very busy since being reborn. I am building again the walls and barriers which separate myself from outsiders. I enjoy my newly regained privacy immensely. I remember little of that place, other than being haunted by unpleasant memories and dark nightmares there. I had been undead for so long, I had forgotten what life was like. I have now died twice, and neither was pleasant. I do not recommend it to you. Immortality for the price of life is far too expensive a cost. No, it isn't. Mordavia was my home for decades. I considered myself to be the liege lord there. I had not intended to harm the people there. I just did not realize that my summoning of the Dark One would destroy Mordavia. I find I am that really hard to, to believe. I know that the folk there are safe, despite the dark magic that was almost released. 
I have another spell that you should learn. It was one with which Adavis almost defeated us in the bowels of the Dark One. I taught that spell to Adavis. Now I teach it to you. I give you freely and by my will the power and knowledge of Dragonfire. <gasps> so you are considered a great hero in Mordavia? I do my best. I do not like it that I am thought to be the villain that you defeated there. We were never really enemies, you and I. Well... We will speak again when you return. That's subject to opinion, you know. So the next time you talk to her is much like Irana. Actually, I'm going to show off the Dragonfire spell right here. I love this because this is the spell that Adavis used in Quest for Glory 2 and Quest for Glory 4. And it's awesome that you yourself can cast it and hurt yourself with it like I'm doing. Because I cast it too close to my feet. But you cast it a little bit further away and it's basically uh, a fire version of Frostbite. And you can chain cast it just like Frostbite. <laughs> It looked a bit cooler in the 2D games, I have to say, but you know what, it's it's still cool. And I really love that little touch where uh, it's the same spell Adavis was using. So yeah, much like with Irana, we have to come... Actually, I'm going to give her flowers first. Flowers? Apparently. It has been ages since I could bear their sweet perfume. It is a pleasure to enjoy flowers once more. I thank you for your Okay, so you come back before you go to Atlantis, because you need a way to breathe water. May you always be welcome here, and may we always be friends. Indeed. I am experiencing magic that a creature of the night cannot enjoy. The light of the dawn against a spider's web, glistening with the sea spray. The warmth of the sun against my face. These are immeasurably beautiful. If you say so. There is much magic in these islands. The island of Skyros particularly has a feel of ancient destructive magic. Marit, too, has a strong underlying presence of dark magic. Be careful, my friend. I'll do my best. I love Tanya as my own daughter. I hated you so much for taking her from me. I gave her eternal youth. You gave her mortality. It grieves me to think she will be happier in her life without me than she would ever be in the undeath with me. I miss my beloved Tanya and hope someday she will remember me with kindness. I think she already did, You really. seek the kingdom of the sea? It has been long since I explored the element of the water. I had little interest in its magic then. However, I did make a magical amulet with which to breathe under the blanket of water. You might find it useful now. Here, take this, for you will need it more than I. Why would you ever need an amulet of water breathing, Katrina? Anyway, whatever. We're going to give her more presents. Um, I like that all the girls have different things that Flowers. they want. It has been ages since I could bear their sweet perfume. It is a pleasure to enjoy I think they all like flowers and candy, but they all have a unique please. gift just for them. So we're going to give her some chocolates. What is this? Oh, a candy of some sort. Ah, its sensuous, smooth taste is a delight. My thanks for this. And she's kind of paranoid, so let's give her an amulet of defense. I have no need of jewelry or baubles, but let me judge. Ah, there is a strong magical aura to this. It is protective magic. I have felt very vulnerable now that I am alive again. This will be an aid and a comfort. My thanks to you. You have given me more than enough fine things. I thank you for your generosity. All right, so we need to head back um, on day seven uh, on the right of justice here. It is good to have you here. Your company is most enjoyable. Well, I am fantastic. Fenris spoke with me today. He informed me what has been happening in this land recently. He said there is most likely to be a serious disaster in the near future. Since Erasmus is still unable to cast spells, Fenris said that I may be needed. I refused. No. I am not a hero like you. This is my home, and I shall defend it 
but I will not go looking for others' troubles. She's no Irana, man. She's so no Irana. So there is now peace between the people of Atlantis and Silmaria. Congratulations. You are now that much closer to the throne. I am a very powerful wizard, although some of my knowledge once cost me my life. My magic protects me, and now that I am again alive, I do not need fear the light of day. My magic makes me strong. You wish to kiss me? Why? So you can stab me through the heart with a stake? No, I do not think that is your purpose this time. Wasn't last time I have either. I kissed many men, but they were meaningless, passionless kisses. It will not be the same with you, but I am not ready for that yet. You are my friend now. Perhaps later we shall become lovers. You literally bring someone back to life. The more I learn about you, the more I learn to like you. I have never met anyone like you before. Well, bye. I have never had a friend before you. I will welcome your return. Okay, so we literally have to just walk off the screen and then walk back because she won't marry us right now. We have just barely begun to understand each other. You and I have not spoken together nearly enough to hear each other's heart. Let us learn more of one another first. So we just walk off the screen and come right back, and hello. I warn you of this danger because you have always played the hero. Now is the time to play the wise man and avoid the trouble that is to come. Brady can't Fenris do that. Fenris warned me of a dragon that lies trapped beneath the island of Marit. It is obvious to me that the bonds that held the dragon have been weakened. If the dragon is freed, there will be vast destruction. I can defend myself against the dragon, but you have no hope of defeating this danger alone. Hey now. Leave while you can. My magical defenses have been raised. Nothing can harm me while I am in my castle. I need fear no dragon. I only need to worry about you and what you intend to do about this can danger. Can I live in your castle? If Silmaria is destroyed, there will be no justice or kingdom to rule. Think of yourself, and take care. You have powerful magic, but the dragon that will destroy Silmaria is mostly immune to magic. It would only be vulnerable to cold. No wizard could hope to defeat it. I think everything's vulnerable to cold. I always thought that love was a foolish weakness. Love leaves you vulnerable to pain and grief. Only an idiot or a deceiver speaks words of love. Now I do not know what to think about this. You gave me life. You offer me love. I enjoy seeing you. I enjoy speaking with you. Do I want to love you? No, I have been hurt by love before. Do I love you? I do not know. Let us speak no more about this, please, until the danger has passed. That will give me time to understand my feelings. So I'm a hero, by the way. I know you are a hero. And that is why I warn you now. Do not play a hero against this danger. Someone will die, but it need not be you. Well, goodbye. Go now while you can. Leave this land before the danger rises. You have already seen what Hades is like. Go before you enter Hades forever. I'll be fine. This is not the time. I feel as if something is about to happen. Something very dangerous. If you survive this, then will I decide whether to bind my life to yours. Alright, well, uh, we head out and we do all that stuff. And then we're here at Minos's uh, fortress. We just beat him. Hear me, heroes of Silmaria. The Dark Dragon has risen and will breathe the flames of destruction throughout these lands. It seems this time, I too must play the hero's role. By the power of magic that lies within the hero's soul, I call to thee. By the power of magic that once bound the dragon, I bind thee to me. By the power of magic that I have mastered, I summon thee to me. She's very long-winded. So that is the doom of Silmaria. 
We shall be its doom instead. So for some reason, Fenris doesn't show up with help when you have Katrina. Do you have to tell her to summon allies for you? You are right. Without others, this thing will soon be free. Magic of this dark place, hear my command. I, Katrina, bind you to my will. I summon those souls that have the strength to fight this creature of fire and destruction. I summon those who can defeat this dragon of doom. I summon them now! Tovo, old friend, we've got the fight of our lives here. Good to fight with Elsa. Alright, so you can tell her the normal okay. stuff. We need to fix the pillar first, though. Toro, fix the pillar! So we'll go over here and we will uh, try to operate this Yonda pillar here. We'll get it set back up. And you guys know the drift from the first time around. We gotta give Toro his axe and all that good business. I'm sad you can't use the Minotaur axe if you're a fighter. There you go, Toro. Now we can actually talk to her about other stuff here. No, you will not give your life to see that I have never loved anything in my life before I met you, and I will not lose you now. If we face our death, then let us face it together. Better to die fighting than to ever give up life for any reason. If you say so. Do not even think of using that spell. It would destroy you utterly. It would destroy us all, man. That would explain why we cannot damage this the way it is. Destructive magics within that dragon cry for blood. They will strengthen the dragon to face the unseen death. We will not give them that satisfaction. Evil only grows stronger when it seems. So like before, we're gonna just frostbite spam for this fight. And surprisingly, this fight actually goes really, really well for me. Like, this is a first take I did of this fight with Katrina, and it goes super well. I might actually fast forward through it a little bit. Because you guys already know how to fight the dragon, you've seen all that business. The dragon, the evil that created such destruction, has been banished from this world forever. Because we did not sacrifice of our blood willingly, the evil will dissipate from here. Although the price seems high, the end of this destruction was worth it. Now, my beloved, we shall have time to enjoy life. Indeed. So, uh... If you ever want to chain me up again, I mean, that that's cool, you know, I, I can get with that. So we come back here to uh, the Hall of Kings, and Logos does his, uh, the same spiel as before, it's, it's pretty much the same business. We're big damn heroes, we did everything right, we danced at the No Man Inn this time around. We are fabulous. The invaders off Marit. They have defeated the General of the Mercenaries and made certain that they will never return to Silmaria's shores. They have dared the depths of Hades and proved their courage and valor. They have brought us peace with Atlantis and made the sea safe for boats and travel. They have brought the unjust to justice and made the murderers pay for their crimes. They are bodacious! They the dragon of doom and the prophecy of Silmaria's destruction will not come to pass. These are the ones who averted this dire fate. These are the heroes of Silmaria. Yay. One person has proven himself beyond others. He has shown again and again the true meaning of heroism. He has earned the title of hero in four lands and again in ours. Silmaria has never had someone more fitting to sit upon her throne. Prince of Shapir, will you bear the burden of our crown? Now, Katrina very will much seems like she would like to rule, king so... Of Selmaria. I went ahead and said we would agree Behold, to be the king. the new king of Selmaria. 
I, Katrina, master of the arcane arts, wish to speak here. I have agreed to marry your future king. He has given me new life and taught me how to love. I shall give that love back to him. It seems that Silmaria will have powerful as well as wise rulers. Congratulations to you both. Long live the king! Yay! Go me! Alright, so we have one more uh, little thing to uh, do before we complete this bonus video here. And that is the thermonuclear blast spell. I figured we'd go out with a bang. We never cast this spell. I'm a little bit uh, disappointed I never showed it to you guys. So, I mean, you don't really have to do anything specific. Just during this battle, you can cast it, but there's different death messages you can get. I don't believe we've summoned anybody else at this point. It's just me, Katrina, and Elsa here. Fuck it, let's blow this guy up. Shabam! The ultimate spell of destruction was cast. You exploded a thermonuclear blast. You killed all your comrades, sent yourself to the tomb. However, you cast it while the dragon was still immune. So you blew it. The dragon lived through it. So anyway, we're gonna have to, uh... Let's, this time we need to bind the dragon with the pillar. So let's do that. We're gonna have her summon uh, Toro and Gort. And we will have them help to fix the pillar. So we wait for them to get in position here. And we uh, lift the pillar back up. I have a hernia. And then we uh, go in and we cast our thermonuclear blast spell again. And it does pretty much the same thing. Everybody, now Gordon Toro die as well. You know, more deaths, it's awesome. You did it! By dying, destroyed the dragon, emulating the place with a nuclear blast. Unfortunately, you killed your companions. You should have warned them before that last cast. You're an asshole. Okay, so it makes a big difference if you warn them first. That gets us yet another death message here. So we do all this stuff again. We're gonna summon more reinforcements. Yeah, 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 yeah. All that good stuff. Summon Gort and Toro. Goro. Gort and Toro. Goro. That's nice. Anyways, so. Gort and Toro uh, come over here and they're going to help us uh, fix Yonder Pillar. We get them on that. They're, they're good at what they do here. We strain our back again, you know, blow a gasket. And uh, then we should have the dragon bound. But we need to tell them about it this time around. So we tell Gort, I can blow us all up. We tell Gort, you can blow us all up. And we tell Elsa as well. I'm going to blow us all up. If you think that it will allow us to destroy this monster, then do it. Better that we should die than all of Silmaria. Yeah. Do not even think of using that spell. It would destroy you utterly. I do what I want, woman. If I want to kill us all in a fiery catastrophe, I'll goddamn well do it. And I cast it anyway, because I'm an asshole. And also drinks a health potion, because that matters. The dragon of doom would destroy your new home and kill all the people you called a friend. So you blasted the dragon at the cost of your life. With all valor, you faced your victorious end. An honorable, honorable death, there is great glory. And that, my friends, is the thermonuclear blast spell. There's no special cinematics. There's no uh, moving epilogue by logos at the end. It's just a normal death screen. And that's why I uh, didn't feel the need to show it in the main LP. As always, thank you guys very much for watching, and I will see you in whatever comes next. Take care of yourselves, guys.